Well, it's always nice if you can make a gift for one of your children. And this year I decided to make my daughter a little wooden piggy bank. And I know on Christmas morning, this may not be the gift she's most impressed with, but 10 years from now, this will be the one that she still has. It's got a little slot at the top for putting the money in. There's a little door at the bottom. This works like a sliding dovetail for getting the money out. It is just a simple box. I use this as an opportunity to practice my dovetails, but you can build the box with butt joints, box joints, miter joints, really whatever you want to do. It's a fun little project for practicing your woodworking. If you want to build this box to the exact measurements as I have here, I'll have the measurements on my website, along with an image of the pig. You can print it out, cut the pig out, and then you have a stencil. Let's go ahead and get started. I get started by cutting the boards to length and I've set up a stop block so all the boards are the same. And I'm using some leftover cherry casing for my project so I have to do a little extra milling. But if you're going to build this just go to the home store and buy 1x4 material and that will measure exactly 3 quarters of an inch by 3 and a half inches. I'm using dovetails to build the box and the first step in cutting dovetails is to mark the depth of the cut and the depth of the cut is the thickness of the board. So like I mentioned in my last dovetailing video, I don't have a nice workbench. It's not that I don't want one, it's just that I really don't have the space in the barn for one right now, maybe down the road maybe make one that's mobile. So anyway, if you want to make this jig, it's one piece of plywood in the back here that measures 10 inches by 39 inches. You have the other piece, which is 10 inches by 33 inches. And then you have a couple of braces here just to keep it nice and straight. And those are three and a quarter by four inches. And then this just clamps to your table and then you have something that you can clamp your, your workpiece to. And that's important when you're cut, cutting dovetails because you're going to want to be able to clamp your piece in the vertical direction. I'm using the 1.8 dovetailing jig by David Barron and the 1.8 jig makes a seven degree dovetail. After cutting the dovetails with the saw, I use a chisel, line the chisel up on the marking gauge line, give it a few light taps, remove some of the material, and once I get a little depth to the cut, then you can hit the chisel a little bit harder. You don't want to start off hitting the chisel hard, or the chisel will back up beyond the marking gauge line. I like to cut the pins first and then use that board to mark the tails. Now I'm going to put the box together and use a few squeeze clamps to hold everything in place while I use a slot cutting bit in the router to cut slots for the flat panel sides. For the flat panels I'm using half inch birch plywood and I'll rip and cross cut the panels to size and then I'll use the table saw to make a tongue that will fit into the slot. And I like to creep up on this measurement. First I'll take an eighth of an inch off and then I'll take a little bit more off and just keep testing it with the slot to make sure I have a nice fit. Once I've got a nice fit, I'll round the corners off using the bandsaw.
Okay, so here's the box and everything looks pretty good. And so the next step is to cut a slot to put the money in and cut a hole to get the money out. The biscuit joiner turns out to be a great tool for making the slot. You just have to plunge in on both sides of the board and of course you want to make sure that your fingers aren't in the way. For the hole at the bottom, I'm using a two inch Faustner bit. And I think two inches is a, a pretty good size because you need something big enough to be able to get the money out. And the next step is the glue up. And I always make sure to have a wet rag handy. It's just a lot easier cleaning any of the glue squeeze out while the glue is still wet. Okay, so I let the glue dry and now I'm working on a way to cover this hole. And what I've come up with is using a sliding dovetail bit in the router and then making a piece of wood and it will slide over the hole. I may even put a rare earth magnet to hold the piece of wood in place. And so now what I'm gonna do is clamp two fences on either side of the box and use them for the router. And then I'll draw a line about a half of an inch here and I'll just freehand this and then clean it up with a chisel. For the door at the bottom, I'll resaw a piece of cherry at a quarter of an inch and then set the angle of my miter saw at 15 degrees, which is the angle of the dovetail bit I just used. I like to attach a temporary fence to my saw when I'm making a cut like this. It helps to support the workpiece and makes the cut a little bit safer. And with the door fit, I'll use the table saw to trim off the overhang. Now I didn't get any footage of this part, but I did use a rare earth magnet to keep the door closed. And I think that's a nice touch. Now I'm using a little painter's tape to tape out the sides of the box. I'll use an acrylic primer to paint the front and back of the box. And once that's dry, I'll give it a light sanding. And for the finish coat, I'm using a flat latex paint and the color is Dove White. And while the paint is drying, I went upstairs to the art studio and printed out the pig image and then cut out the stencil. And here I'm using a color, this is called Carnival Red, and I'm applying the paint with a foam roller. And a foam roller works great for stencils. And I should mention that the red paint is also a latex paint. For the eye of the pig, I cut a little circle out of painter's tape. I'm using a lacquer sprayer here, but you could use lacquer in a spray can. And I like to seal the acrylic or the latex paint first. And that way when I sand the outside of the box, the sawdust doesn't stick to the flat paint. Once the lacquer dries, I can sand the sides of the box and that will give you a really tight, crisp line at the edges. And then once all the sides are sanded, I use the air chuck to blow off any of the loose sawdust and then spray the whole project with three coats of lacquer, sanding lightly in between coats with 320 sandpaper. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you build this project. This was a, a lot of fun making this project. And I, I think I'm gonna end up having to make three more for my boys, but not for this Christmas. I hope uh, you guys have a great holiday, a great year. I'm not sure if this is my last video, but if it is, I just wanted to say thank you for all your support and I'll see you soon.